Hey PC World fans, Adam here with GPU expert Brad Charkis. Expert, thank you. Uh, on our weekly podcast, The Full Nerd, we answer all sorts of questions. Uh, you can ask the questions by going into our Discord or, or showing up to the live show. But for this one, I want to f- focus on a specific topic that people ask a lot. And it is, what is the best GPU for gaming at 1440p? So this is actually a really interesting part of the market, because this is the part where prices really start to diverge. Yeah. Like in 1080p gaming, you're typically looking under $300, you know, two to $300 range. When you start getting into 1440p gaming, a lot of it depends a lot more on your monitor speed, your mm. aspect ratio, stuff like that, and prices can start to quickly get out of hand. Hmm. Like okay. uh, for this price point, you're, you're probably going to start around the three hundred and fifty dollar mark. Okay. Between the RTX twenty sixty, the original, and the Radeon RX fifty seven hundred, don't buy the twenty sixty. It has ray tracing, which Nvidia has been ramping up and you know talking about. But the Radeon RX 5700 from AMD is just a better card. It's faster, it's just as power efficient, it's quiet, it's just way more worth it. And the ray tracing performance you get from the RTX 2060 is not great. Hmm. So it's not worth investing in ray tracing at this level yet. On our site, on PCWorld.com, I maintain an up-to-date list that I've been updating for years. It's going to be updated for years. Awesome. Uh, I'll I'll link to it in the description below. Yeah, graphics cards. And we actually have the Radeon RX 5700 as our current recommendation for 1440p gaming. That's at 60 frames per second you're looking to get on the monitor. Okay. So most monitors are 60 hertz. Uh, Once you start getting up into 1440p like this, you start to see some faster ones. Huh. And okay. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. What about uh, what about crazy high you know frame rates that uh, that some of these monitors enable? Yeah. So uh, both of these cards have upgraded versions. For four hundred bucks, you can get the Radeon RX fifty seven hundred XT. Okay. Or Nvidia's GeForce RTX twenty sixty Super. So a more super version of the 2060, and it is. Uh, The 2060 Super has two more gigabytes of RAM, so it has eight gigabytes of RAM. It's a lot better for this resolution of gaming. Hmm. Um, This is where, if you really want to get into ray tracing, if you really want to buy into that, like future-proofing, if you think it's going to take off in the next few years, this is where you might consider jumping in on the boat. Skip the RTX 2060. Consider the RTX 2060 Super if you want ray tracing. Huh. If you don't know if you want ray tracing, if you're kind of on the fence, um, for the exact same price, the Radeon RX 5700 XT gives you a lot more performance. Wow, okay. So... Well, I guess that is the question. Do you want more performance now or the uh, future-proofing of RTX uh, in the future? I wouldn't even call it future-proofing. I'd call it potential. Always buy for what you're doing now. Never... The future is never guaranteed. Hmm. But it, I, everything I, looks like ray tracing is going to blow up. All the devs I've talked to about it love it, but it might take longer than you think. Well, and uh, in the news recently, uh, somebody said that uh, you'd be crazy not to buy an <laughs> RTX card right now because mm-hmm. it is the future. So mm-hmm. that that is you know kind of a, an internal battle that a lot of people are having right now. It is, and AMD is countering it pretty well with the Radeon RX 5700 XT, actually, mm-hmm. because for 400 bucks, okay. in a lot of games... Um, it, across the board, beats the 2060 Super in performance. Oh. Obviously, doesn't have ray tracing. But it gets real close, like, single-digit percentage performance-wise with the $500 RTX 2070 Super, which wow. is another good option for 1440p gaming. Okay. Um, so you're getting a lot of the performance for $100 less. You don't get ray tracing. Interesting. Uh, and what what about uh, crazy things like kind of I've seen at this monitor resolution you start to get like wide aspect ratios like a, a what is it thirteen forty yep. or thirty four forty by yep. uh, fourteen forty. Yep. And those uh, are actually much more demanding than yeah. standard fourteen forty p because you have that many more pixels to drive. So if you do have a widescreen gaming monitor, an ultra wide gaming monitor, one you might want to consider looking at the four K graphics card recommendations that oh. we have later. Hmm. But if you're going to be buying one of these graphics cards and hoping to get an ultra wide graphic, an ultra wide monitor going well, especially if it has a higher refresh rate, rate is when you're going to want to look at the four K options. But if assuming it's a sixty hertz monitor, which again the vast majority of monitors are. Um, I would think if you stick to one of the higher end cards, the Radeon 5700 XT or the 2070 Super, 2060 Super, 
you're going to want to go for that rather than the more affordable cards. Okay. Uh, Just to make sure you have enough oomph, because nothing sucks worse than spending $350 on a graphics card and it doesn't do what you want it and to And whatever how much you, you spend on the monitor itself. You yeah. Know, you want it to be able to keep up. Uh, so I asked this in the 1080p version of this video, but I'll, I'll ask it again here. Uh, what's your take on, on things like uh, the, the different companies, the different manufacturers, even the reference cards? Uh, I know there's a heated debate over the, uh, the Radeon Mm -hmm. uh, blower style fans versus the dual axial mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, what, what's your take on that? Well, in general, unless you have a very specific reason to, mainly being you're running four, three or four graphics cards, or you have a very small form factor case, I advise uh, avoiding blower style coolers, mm -hmm. which have a single fan, and then they use that single fan to shoot the hot air out the back, and instead getting a dual or tri axial fan. Uh, cooler with the fan. Yeah. So they have two or three fans right in the shroud, blows it back into your case, and then your normal case fans take it out. Okay. Um, the Radeon RX 5700 models, they just recently launched, and for the first month or so, they were only available in reference card blower style. Mm. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to benchmark and test a Sapphire Pulse mm. Radeon RX 5700, which is for only a $10 more expensive than the reference version. Um, and it has a back plate, it has the dual axial fans, it's a lot quieter, it's a lot more efficient, so in general, try to go for a custom cooler. Okay, awesome. Uh, and like you said earlier, this, this article is gonna be updated all the time, correct? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I'll link to it in the description below. And uh, you can tune into The Full Nerd every week. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to it on any of the podcast platforms, but uh, thank you for being here and ask, answering these questions uh, with me, Brad. Anytime. Yeah, and thank you. We will see you later.